everyone. Welcome to At Home with Sally. I'm Sally Clarkson, and I have the biggest privilege in the world to be with so many friends from all over the world who join me every week to listen to my stories, inspiration, biblical encouragement, and I am just so glad that you're here today. Thanks so much for joining me. Sally Clarkson. I'm so glad you joined me at uh, at home with Sally and friends. Uh, I have just been thinking about you all week long. I've had so many personal messages and emails and uh, comments, and I'm just very grateful for you for this arena that we get to be in and share our ideals. You heard that delightful music when we started this podcast today. Well, that is uh, original uh, arrangements for my son, Joel Clarkson. And you wouldn't believe how many times I get letters from people who say, I wish you would interview your children more. We want to know about their lives. We want to know what's going on in their lives. So today I invited my son, Joel Clarkson, and uh, we're going to have fun talking. But uh, many of you are subscribers to his music. Thousands of people listen to his music every year. This is one of my favorite times of year to put on Joel's music. So I thought I would put some at the beginning of this podcast. But anyway, today I have a a biblical theme at the end of my podcast on waiting. What does it look like to to wait for maybe it's a job or getting pregnant or a baby to come or a move to somewhere else or a, a doctor's appointment? Whatever it is, waiting is a very, very biblical uh underpinning it's a, it's a biblical theme and so since we're talking about advent and uh, a, a real part of advent is music and waiting is a theme we're going to tie it all together and Joel's going to help me do that today so Joel welcome to my podcast thank you it's so lovely to be here so Joel where are you right at this moment where do right we find now, you right now i am I am in Oxford, England. I'm in the Dreaming Spires, uh, a little little ways out from the Dreaming Spires, not right in the center of town, but um, uh, but not, not too far either. So, um, so you're in you're in Oxford, which I miss being there with all of you all. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm sure you had a Thanksgiving with a bunch of friends, or oh, I know, tell them where you were on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I, I had a delightful Thanksgiving. I was with. Um, wonderful Sarah and Thomas, who I'm sure many of you know through the podcast, Um, my sister Sarah and brother-in-law Thomas. We had a wonderful Thanksgiving feast with a number of friends from here around Oxford uh, in their beautiful vicarage and uh, absolutely got to celebrate. And the celebration went on into the evening and we put on a roaring fire and we just had great conversation and and, um, encouraged each other and had a, a wonderful time scaring away the cold. <laughs> scaring away the cold. Well, and you got to see my wonderful grands too, and the new That's baby. Right. Yeah, it was, it was delightful. They they kept the uh they kept the sort of the rhythms of that of the of the season and of the day going, which was really delightful. Oh good. Well, Joel, I'm really excited to talk about some of these themes today with you. But first of all, tell us just a little bit for all the people who are kind of new to you and all the other people who don't mind hearing this story. Tell us mm-hmm. about uh, your background and what brings you to this point today of doing all this creative, beautiful um, arranging and and um, writing and creating uh, that we're going to be able to share with people. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, so I, uh, uh, after kind of trying to figure out my way with university after graduating uh, from high school. I, it c- kind of took me a little while to figure out my pathway, but um, I, had, I had always been very musical since I was very, very young. And so uh, I eventually found my way to Berkeley College of Music, where I ended up uh, staying around after kind of jumping from university to university. Berkeley finally caught me. 
uh, Berkeley's in Boston, and it's a wonderful modern music um, university and uh, a college of music. And they uh, send a lot of people in the music industry, a lot of people into very highly placed areas in uh, in, they send people to orchestras and into jazz bands, into rock bands, into film music, all sorts of different places. And so it was a real privilege to get to study at Berkeley. And um, I graduated with my degree in composition. And uh, that took me into kind of indirectly, it took me into the, the film industry. It took me a few years to kind of get my get the ball rolling and figure out my pathway there. But I knew during my time at Berkeley that I loved music for film and music for TV, and I thought I should give this a go. So eventually, I found my way into music for film and TV in Los Angeles. Hmm. Well, I know that um, that you have created so many different uh, uh, genres of music. And then um, one of the things I want to say, because people are going to hear your music, uh, I love the music that you and Joy made, for instance, um, from your collaboration during COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the music that you created for the Life Giving Home. I love the music that you have created for Advent. And then um, recently, you uh, were honored in two different competitions in England um, for uh, as as finalists in um, choral music. And mm-hmm. uh, and so it's amazing to me. I, I don't understand. I can remember one time that we were traveling as a family and we were stuffed into a hotel room. And Joel was um, on the bed with his computer. And I said, what are you doing? You know, we're making noise. We're doing all these things. And he said, well, I'm just arranging um, 40 instruments on on a film piece um, as, you know, kind of the accompaniment for all of the different things. And I said, what? (laughs) Um, Joel has just always had music in his mind, creativity in his mind, words in his mind, art in his mind. He is definitely the artist of our family. Um, so Joel, kind of move us forward because we could do this all day, but I want to move <laughs> forward to to kind of what you have been envisioning because um, you did end up going to school in um, in the UK. So tell us about that. Yeah. So after uh, a few years of working in sort of film music and doing uh, things adjacent to that, I got interested in sacred music and then writing music requires and. Uh, after working with different choirs and doing a fellowship that was kind of um, uh, tangentially related to that, eventually I started first in a program in Cambridge in choral music and then uh, later decided to not complete that and instead go study theology instead. And that took me to St. Andrews, where I did first a master's degree in theology and the arts and then a PhD in theology and the arts. And uh, I I did my particular thesis on theology and music and asking how music relates to theology. So I, even though I, my specialization is in theology, it still has a musical aspect to it. So you're combining your, your many, your different degrees all together in so many different ways, which I absolutely love. Now I'm going to take a tiny little break here and just say, people have wondered uh, as they look at all of um, you and the other kids, how did they get into their arenas? What did we do? And when I look at you, I think that one of the most important things that probably happened in your life is that uh, we fed your soul with great music, with musicians, with uh, with art, with beauty, with uh, literature. And you kind of took all of these things inside the personality that God gave you as an artist, and you're developing it into uh, something that's really going to, I think inspire, encourage, and help people. Because I feel like one of the kind of drives of our whole family is to leave uh, beauty in the world, to leave our mark of the creativity and the beauty of God. And a lot of people say, you know, where did your interest in theology come? And I think for you, it was kind of, um, you love God, but you love the organic God. You love creation. You love beauty. You do uh, natural photography. Um, you do art. Um, where do you feel like, as you look at all the different things that the you know that helped you to become who you are? Um, what do you really feel like is kind of your goal with you as a musician, an artist, a photographer, all these different things? Mm. What what motivates you in these whole areas? 
Yeah, well, I think I have you know a, a very strong specialization in music, and I have a strong specialization in theology. And something that I've been thinking about a lot in recent years, and slowly starting to work on in different corners, different arenas, is um, how music acts as a form of expressing deep, the deepest truths about our faith, um, both to us and to other people. And so for me, my study of theology was a way to delve into the depths of that of that knowledge in a profound, in a more profound way so that, you know, not so that I could leave music behind, but so that I could take it up in a more meaningful way. And so as I sort of move to the future, one of my desires, one of my goals is to find ways to connect with, uh, with, with people and connect with, with my audience and connect with, with many of you who have been so faithful to listen to my music over these years to engage with those deeper conversations about how music opens up to us, uh, the, the sort of dimensions of our faith and a deeper understanding of who God is and and how much he loves us and desires us to know him. Well, and you are an author of a book, um, Sensing God, that where you talked about a lot of these different things. Um, you're a composer of both uh, film music and choral music. You're a theologian who writes and teaches in university settings. <laughs> Um, and so in the midst of all of this, and I think I have a passion for this too, I always say to um, to parents, moms and dads, you really can't pass on what you haven't invested in yourself. And mm-hmm. I think it's so difficult and challenging to find um, both words and resources, music, art, um, uh, devotions, uh, inspired thoughts to feed our souls and hearts and minds with so that we can actually have others feed from the treasures that we've stored up in ourselves. And so Mm -hmm. as I hear about your new project that you're doing, um, it feels like you really want to be a resource of truth and light and beauty and inspiration. Tell us about your new project, Sound and Spirit, because I feel like it kind of dovetails with what I've wanted to provide, um, with people just as we did in our home with resources of excellence and thought ideas, words, and beauty. So tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing. It's called sound and spirit. Is that correct? Yeah. So sound and spirit is a sub stack initiative. It's a, a new project for me. And basically, uh, you know, for, for a long time, many of you have followed me on Instagram. Um, if you haven't sort of one of the things that I've loved doing, is uh, that I, I use uh, Instagram as a, a place to sort of post pictures of my life and to reflect on sort of the, you know, whatever is on my mind, you know, just sort of the different theological things, things that sort of attune to the, liturg- the liturgical year for those who follow the church calendar uh, or maybe current events that are going on and just sort of talking through those and thinking about some of their spiritual or theological implications. And so sound and spirit is a way for me to bring that into an even uh, sort of a deeper focus. Uh, so I, in the coming months, uh, I'm looking forward to, especially now that I know the doctorate, I finished my doctorate this summer, I'm looking forward to releasing more music. And my first project is going to be releasing a new track every month uh, as part of the Sound and Spirit uh, project that is available for anyone to listen to on any streaming platform. Uh, and that, that gets released on a monthly basis. But for uh, paid subscribers to my Substack, I'm providing a an extended essay every month that reflects on the sort of spiritual backdrop behind that particular track. What, what was going on in my mind, what the music represents, what's happening in the music, what it means to me, my own observations about you know life and culture and art and scripture and um, what it means to hope and how we go through difficult seasons, it, all these different kinds of ideas. I want to sort of provide this in this essay setting to accompany each of these tracks. So this will include for listeners um, of that music, uh, I'll, I'll be releasing these essays on, the, on, on a monthly basis, and I'll be releasing the music to paid, list, to paid subscribers early so that they can listen to the music along with reading the essay. Uh, and so they'll have early access to the music. And in addition to this, I will also be hoping to post on occasion uh, different collections of my nature photography with quotes and suggestions for art and other things like that. And possibly even as time goes along, I'm looking forward to taking up my past as as an audiobook narrator 
and narrating some of my uh, favorite passages from books and poetry as well. So you are the narrator for, um, for, tell us about that. Just what were you the narrator for? Because people <laughs> all over the world write me letters about how they hear your voice. Yeah. So I was very privileged to be asked by uh, S.D. Smith, uh, author of The Green Ember, to narrate his book, his his uh, Green Ember book. So uh, this is right when they first came out. Uh, the Green Ember is a, it's a children's fantasy series. Uh, centering around rabbits uh, Heather and Pickett and their adventures and misadventures uh, as they are trying to save rabbit kind in their in their own land and um, it's a wonderful rollicking story four different um, of the main volumes along with some shorter volumes uh, little novellas uh, and I I was very privileged to be the narrator for the four main volumes for um, the Green Ember Ember Falls Ember Rises and Ember's Ending. And uh, that has expanded my borders to be able to engage with many of you uh, and to hear your own enjoyment of those stories. Uh, and it's been a delight to to get to try this completely different thing than music and really very different than theology, but such a gift. Well, and so um, that's where, from your background in um, reading, um, you're going to do some uh, reading of passages or books or poems or things that you think mm-hmm. will kind of uh, center around the theme, the music. Are you going to also yeah. give some um, of your photography? Yeah, I, I mentioned that. I'm, I'm going to really, I'm going to be doing posts and um, little releases of photography. So, so each of the um, each of the essays will have a, a original and exclusive photography that's only available on Substack. Yeah, each of the essays that are sent to the paid subscribers. Uh, but I'll also just be posting photography from along the way as I'm able to on a on a slightly more, probably more regular basis throughout the months as they go along. So if you're a paid subscriber, what I'm hoping is that uh, we can sort of keep up a dialogue and you can comment on the posts and I can engage with you all. And we can, uh, it, yeah, you can, you, you, I, I want to invite you into my own artistic and theological journey so that you can, you can see the interplay for me as an artist, as a composer between sound, whether that be my music, which is my main focus, or from time to time, a little bit of narration, and spirit, my interests in theology and spirituality and how those themes play into my own personal life. Hmm. Well, I think that's so wonderful. I think that what I would say is a lot of people may not have ever seen you on Instagram and seen the reels that you do that give a, Hmm. a kind of a beautiful example of combining photography and music and um, words. Mm-hmm. So where are you on Instagram? Yeah, so if, if you want to follow me, you can go to uh, instagram.com forward slash or on your on your um, on your phones. Uh, the the handle is joel.i.clarkson. So you can find okay. me there on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And if you're interested in signing up for the Substack, um, either as a free or a paid subscriber, you can go to Joel Clarkson dot substack s u b s t a c k dot com. So Joel Clarkson dot substack dot com. Okay, great. Well, um, I'm excited about this. And how often will you be? Um, will the Substack come out? It comes into your email. Is that right? So when people sign up for yes. it in their email, they will get the the music, the photography, the essays. And um, when will that come out? Yeah. So on a monthly basis, I'll be releasing the essays, uh, which will include um, early access to each of the tracks that I'm releasing as part of the Sound and Spirit series uh, for streaming online. Uh, and on a on a less uh, regimented basis, just kind of as the spirit leads, I'll also be putting up other posts along the way that include photography and uh, and and narration and perhaps even other goodies as as they go along, but. The main the main thing that I that you will be able to access is these um, essays with the early access to music once a month. Okay, so if I was going to be a paid subscriber, um, how do, how much money is it going to be a month, or how much is the charge, and how can I become a part of it? Yeah, so if you just go to joelclarkson.substack.com, all the pricing is listed there. And right now, there's a fairly, I think it's about a 30% discount if you are to, if you're going to do a, a, an annual uh, purchase. So it's a really good deal for just a short amount of time. Uh, and uh, if, you, if that's not uh, the, sort of the best option for you, you can still um, do it month to month as well. 
or you can also be a foundational supporter, which means that you, if, if you're one of my super fans and this is, and you, and you want to support me at a slightly higher level, um, you can do that as well. And you can kind of set your own price for that. But um, any amount, you know, if just even on a free level, I, I'm so grateful to have you subscribed. And, and for those who are uh, subscribing for free, I will be, you know, keeping up announcements about uh, upcoming events from time to time and new musical releases and that sort of thing. And um, if you feel that you are ready to go for the paid, the, the paid subscription, then I'll look so forward to sharing this broader world with you as well. Okay, so that's sound and spirit. Well, Joel, the thing that I really wanted to also uh, finish on today is that um, I get letters from people all over the world who listen to your Christmas music every single year. You have two <laughs> volumes of that. And this is the time when people, where wherever you already listen to music, whether it's Apple or Spotify or wherever, um, you can find Joel's music there. But I just love the background of how you came up with the ideas for these albums. Can you just tell us real quickly about that? Yeah, I'm delighted that people have found these to be perennial enjoyments that they continue to come back to them over and over again every year. So uh, I've released two albums for Christmas uh, and one single. So the two albums are Midwinter Carols and Midwinter Carols Volume 2. And the uh, the single is The Christ Child's Lullaby, which is a, a traditional Scottish lullaby um, for Christmas. And or it's a Christmas a traditional Christmas carol, a Scottish Christmas carol, and the sort of the impetus behind these albums was that I felt like there was a lot of very kind of slightly cheesy contemporary music that tends to overrun our radios, and some of it's very fun. It's good. It's it's all good fun. There's there's no there's no you know cri- no criticism for it, but there is there are these deep traditions within the Christian uh, Christian long arm of Christian. Uh, ancient Christian practice around Advent and Christmas that um, that discuss the the real sort of uh, the, the the breadth and the depth of of what Christmas means and what Advent means. Advent being the season that leads up to Christmas, a season of waiting, of hoping, of longing, of of not being entirely assured, you know, of of being assured of the cry of the light of Christ coming into the world, in spite of the fact that the darkness is still sort of laying heavily over the world as it as it were. And so I, I wanted to to go back and look at some of these traditional carols that uh, were were most many of them were written in a time before there was electric light or even um, uh, more prevalent light, you know, more um, lamp light or anything like that. It's written in a time when people really experienced the darkness. They really experienced the cold. And so these carols uh, sort of uh, brought to life uh, a, a, an inner meaning to the experience they had of the, the cold and the dark of winter, that uh, they understood what what warmth and what light meant because they experienced that darkness so profoundly. And so for them to sing of the coming light of Christ was something that was really um, very uh, present and real to them. So, so I've recorded these they're piano albums uh, and i've loved sharing them with you all i hope that if you haven't heard them that you'll give them a, a a listen you can find them anywhere that music is streamed online so spotify or apple music or amazon music or anything like that um and i i, I look forward to hearing I, I hope that you enjoy them and, and look forward to hearing from you well and something that i've done is like for instance um bring a torch jeanette isabella um, mm. Before uh, I, I've just kind of gone through on Google and <laughs> researched a little bit of a story behind each of the songs that you have on your albums because mm-hmm. it gives such a context to the beauty of them. Um, I'm going to end just talking about this for a second because you're going to release a song I think today, which um, it'll mm-hmm. be today by the time people listen to this, and um, I really love it. It's kind of a different uh, creation for you. It's a soundscape, so to speak. And um, we're going to play maybe a tiny little bit of it here today. But um, I think this whole theme of waiting, which I'm going to be talking about at the end of this, um, waiting is so hard. Uh, Waiting for something to happen. Waiting to see, is God listening to my prayer? Uh, And and the Israelites um, had, of course, done such a terrible job of following God as their father. And they had created uh, chaos for themselves in their, in their lives. And um, so we, we end the Old Testament with the prophets um, foretelling of a Savior 
who is going to break into the world as light, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, that he was going to come into the world. But it, this song, I think, is so beautifully reflects um, the waiting and waiting and waiting. It was hundreds of years, I think about 500 years that um, they waited before they heard from God again. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of this chaotic time in history, um, Jesus came into the world as a tiny little humble baby into a normal family and turned the world upside down. But Christmas, this whole Advent, as we wait, we wait for good news. We wait for Christ to intervene in our lives. We wait for the hope of His kingdom to come. And I love that that's a, a beautiful, that your first article is gorgeous. Um, it, it really ministered to me that you're going to be sharing with everybody tomorrow. But um, I love that your music actually depicts what it looked like to wait. And um, so anyway, I'm, I'm, I guess I can, you can tell I'm excited about this. <laughs> but anyway, um, anything else you want to <laughs> share as you end? Um, let's just say again, uh, you can find, um, are all of these things listed on your website so people could go there and find them? Uh, I think the best place to go is um, Instagram. I, I, I update regularly on Instagram. So Instagram.com forward slash Joel.i.clarkson. Uh -huh. That's where you can find me on Instagram. Uh, I've posted about my Substack there. My link is in the profile. So if you aren't able to find it, you can just go to my Instagram profile and click on the link there. It'll take you straight to the Substack. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm delighted. And if you want to go directly to the Substack, it's Joel Clarkson dot Substack dot com. Great. All right, Joel. Well, thank you so much for being here today. And um, I can't wait to talk to you again, just you and I as friends. <laughs> and um, I, know. <laughs> I think this is going to be a wonderful, uh, maybe even as a gift for some people for their new year mm. to um, yeah. to give it to somebody if they are in need of light and beauty and encouragement and art and, and music and so on. So thank you so much. Mm. And I know that you're about to go to bed. It's It's late over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's late. Yeah. No, it's a delight. I'm so glad we got to chat. Okay, great. Well, I'll look forward to talking with you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, my friends, the last part that you just heard from Joel was the soundscape of the people waiting in darkness, waiting in darkness, waiting in darkness. And I can't wait to, to read some of my Bible verses that I've prepared for you today about waiting because um, I think that I am a fast person and I expect things to be done quickly. <laughs> so when I look back on my own life and even now, I think one of the hardest things for me to do in the whole wide world is to wait. Um, right now, our family is waiting on many things. We were waiting on Sarah to have the baby, which she thought it was going to be two weeks early. So every day for two weeks, we would call her and say, any, any signs of the baby? Um, I know I, I want to tell you just a little bit about Joel. Um, I, had, uh, I was living in Vienna, Austria, and I had had baby Sarah, and uh, so I was really praying that I could get pregnant again, but I just couldn't get pregnant. I just couldn't get pregnant. And so uh, I remember I was in a little coffee shop all by myself. Uh, and this was many years ago. I was probably about 33 years old. And uh, I was uh, pouring my heart out to the Lord in my journal. I don't know where it is, somewhere upstairs in my bedroom. But I said, dear God, um, I'm living in Vienna. We're doing this ministry. Um, we have so many different issues in our lives. But Lord, it would just mean the world to me if you would give me another baby. Lord, I pray for a son. 
And whatever you do, I trust you. I love you. Um, I will accept your will and your way in my life. But I wrote out in my journal the desires of my heart. And then it's interesting because Joel, my very musical, artistic son, introverted, tall, Renaissance man, six foot five, when he conducts an orchestra, it's just beautiful to watch. It's, you know, his arms are stretched out. And anyway, he's, he's kind of fun to watch when he directs an orchestra. But, um, uh, or a choir. Um, but anyway, uh, here Joel was, an answer to prayer, in Vienna, Austria. And it is not lost on me that it was in this Sound of Music city where Mozart lived and Beethoven lived and all of the different musicians that God put the spirit of music into my son's life. So all of us have a story and all of us have uh, an imagination, a a thought in the mind of God when he created us, that he created us with unique personalities, unique um, potential, unique opportunities. And that's what I love about all of you all. You are harnessing the power of love and of spirituality and righteousness and artisticness and and um, and knowledge, and you are pouring that into a child that they might reflect what God made them to do. And um, I feel like so many of us come from a place where we didn't have that done to us, but we're trying to imagine what it looks like to do it for other people. So it's really fun for me as a mom. Never knew that any of my children would um, become uh, theologians or um, uh, be involved in academics or be involved in creativity or writers or musicians or whatever. But here you go. You plant seeds and they grow into these human beings who have a vision for touching their world. And so it was really fun today for me to do that with Joel. But I've got to hurry because it's already been a pretty long um, it's been a pretty long uh, podcast. So I'm going to go through all these different things really quickly. First of all, I wanted to talk with you about uh, people have been writing me all sorts of questions about tea and coffee and this and that. Well, I wanted to tell you some of my favorite um, herbal teas. Uh, I, I do drink all sorts of different things. For me, sometimes it's just a matter of having something hot in your hand. But uh, I became familiar with rooibos, R-O-I-B-U-S, rooibos tea. It doesn't have caffeine in it. And um, I remember, I might have even told you about this last week, but one of my sweet friends, Jane, who was from South Africa, said, oh, it will cure everything you ever have wrong with you. Anyway, so my favorite rooibos tea is I drink rooibos with vanilla. And it's, it's such a strong little tea that I, or it's at least got a strong color to it, that I can um, foam up my oat milk in my foamer and put it on top of the rooibos tea, and it tastes really, really great. Well, another tea that I drink from time to time is uh, when I was living in Vienna many years ago, um, I was introduced to uh, chamomile tea or chamomile tea. Of course, a lot of people in in the UK drink it. I think that might be where they originated the flavor. But anyway, I drink, uh, it's a chamomile, honey, and vanilla. And I sometimes make that at night, and um, and I just love having my little chamomile. Sometimes I even, I call it chamomile. Chamomile is what I've heard a lot of friends call it. But um, it's supposed to help you sleep really well, and it's really good for you. Another one is, um, and I drink this a lot. It took me a while to become used to this, but I love uh, to drink a spot of ginger tea. Ginger is supposed to be really good for your digestive system, but it's pretty spicy. It took me a bit to get used to it, but um, I did get used to it. I like strong flavors. So you might, if you just type in ginger tea uh, online, you'll find all of the different ways that ginger tea um, kind of creates a sort of a robust health. So I thought I would share three of my favorite teas. I also like chai. But chai has such a different recipe from so many different people that you have to find the one that you like. But anyway, the other thing I was going to tell you is that you know that I like Yorkshire gold tea, but I also 
drink decaf Yorkshire gold tea because it is water processed decaffeinated. Um, many teas that are decaffeinated or many co uh, coffees that are decaffeinated are done with such atrocious chemicals and a terrible process that it, it really is bad for you. Uh, it's terrible to drink decaf coffee or tea when it hasn't been done the proper way. But Yorkshire Gold uh, uses a water process that is natural, that takes all the caffeine out and minimizes any acidity that's in there, no chemicals, um, very little acid. And so I drink Yorkshire Gold um, decaf tea when I want to cut down a little bit on my caffeine because it is water process. And the first place that Clay and I ever learned about water process was years ago, and this is a, a, this is a water process for coffee, um, Swiss water process. It's when they use water to um, take out, uh, to distill the caffeine. And Swiss water process, uh, decaf coffee, means there's no chemicals. It's almost acid-free, and it's a natural way to drink strong decaf coffee. Um, so be sure to check into the places where you get your coffee or you order your coffee. You can go online and put um, no acid Swiss water process decaf, and it will come up with a, with a whole bunch of different choices that you can order from. Um, but anyway, I just thought I would add that to this little podcast really quickly. Um, and um, there's so many different things I may or may not. I think I'll just tell you one of the hits of our week um, and when we are, are a day and Thanksgiving. I love the long, um, thin green beans that you can get in frozen packages in the store because they're, they're just kind of elegant. And so I steamed green beans in my little um, pot on the stove. I steamed uh, green beans. In a separate pan, I uh, toasted some almonds with the tiniest little bit of, of um, olive oil. And then I tossed my, my uh, green beans in sea salt and in olive oil with just the tiniest little sprinkle of garlic powder. And you can also use real garlic. Um, and then uh, toss that all together. And then on the top of it, I sprinkled the little toasty almonds. And everybody said that was the most amazing thing. So I, I made a hit with those green beans. If I mentioned them last week, then it's worth mentioning again. All right. Well, you know, I love to tell you uh, what are some of my favorite reads. There's two books I'm going to recommend this week. Um, we probably have about 100 Christmas books that are children's books. Um, and so I wanted to tell you about two of my favorites. I'll be talking about some more favorites in the weeks to come. But I love, I particularly love the illustrations and the story of the Christmas miracle of Jonathan Toomey, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N, and then his last name is T-O-O-M-E-Y. And um, the Christmas miracle of Jonathan Toomey. It's a lovely story. My children wanted me to read it over and over again, and you will delight in the illustrations. And it's kind of a how kindness and love really melts a heart. The other book that I think is worth getting, there's um, uh, the writer O. Henry wrote the famous story, The Gift of the Magi. And I hope that most of you were raised on The Gift of the Magi. Um, it's not about the Magi. It's about a young... Um, a young married couple who are trying to, they're desperately to provide a surprise Christmas gift for one another. And I'm not going to tell you the ending of the story, but it's a beautiful story. There is a hardback version that is about 1795 or something like that, and which I love because of the illustrations and because it's a story I'm going to read again and again and again uh, to my grandchildren because I read it to my children. But there's another one for about $6 and something on Amazon, and it's called The Gift of the Magi by O. Henry and other short stories. So I don't know the other short stories, so don't hold me to those. But um, anyway, I think that you would probably love um, both of those, the, the book 
and also the short story. And um, anyway, so I told you that I waited for Joel. I, ho- I hope that some of you enjoyed the podcast with him today because many people who went to our conferences for years know Joel. And um, we, we probably had about 80,000 people over 23 years at our conferences. And so a lot of people know him and listen to his music and follow him. But uh, it's been my privilege. Uh, he is one of the kindest men I have ever known. And we spent a lot of time in Oxford uh, together over the past couple of years. And he has uh, cooked for me. He has, I think I told you that one night I was um, walking home late from one of my Bible studies. It was a dark night. It was windy. It was cold. And um, it, it was um, barely sprinkling. And I looked up the dark street and I saw this very tall man in a jacket coming towards me. And sure enough, it was Joel. And he said, I didn't want you to walk home alone in the darkness of this cold night. So I decided to come and retrieve you. And um, he's he's just uh, one of the best friends I've ever had. But I did have to wait a while before I became pregnant with him. And, um, and it's been such a delight to be we're, we're kind of besties, uh, and we did, over the last um, period of time, meet often in the park for our long walks, so there you go. Um, he's my walking buddy, he's my confidant, he's uh, my artistic one, he, um, he's a friend, and um, so anyway, I, you got to know a little bit more about Joel today. But I wanted to speak, um, before I end this, on waiting Waiting is, can be such an anxious, such a hurtful time. God, does it? Does my life matter? Are you there? God, I've tried to be faithful. God, I've been praying to you about these issues or this situation or this child or this job. I have never gotten to a point in my life when I'm not waiting on God. And there seems to be some value in Scripture. Um, and awaiting is a part of Advent. I told you I was going to be delighting in God. I was just praying uh, I was going to delight in him this this season as a present to him. And as I've been kind of stewing about um, some things I'm waiting for, and I all of a sudden I realized that when, and I'm going to read you some of these verses, but I realized that it says that a, a gentle and quiet spirit is precious to God. And I realized that if I'm going to delight in God this Christmas season, one of the ways I can do that is say, God, I am not going to beg. I am not going to fret. I am not going to be that immature child who demands everything I want right now. I'm going to have a gentle and a quiet spirit before you because you are my gentle, loving, generous God. I'm going to say, I know that I can trust you. I know that you see my heart. You hear my voice. I know that you care about my children and about um, uh, my grandchildren, about my husband, about our health, about our well-being. And God, I'm going to give you this week a heart that is willing to be gentle, to be submissive, to be uh, to, to get close to you and praise you because I know that whether or not the waiting process for my situation takes a very long time, or a short time, I want to give you the gift of my faith today. And um, I think that um, it's interesting because Advent, even as we look back at the Jews, as I mentioned earlier in the podcast, um, they had gotten themselves into a pickle. They they didn't have the ultimate um, freedom and blessing and prosperity of God that he had promised in Deuteronomy because they rebelled against him so many different times, and God would, would try to draw them back to himself out of his love, and, and God would try to bring situations in their lives that would cause them to, to see his generosity, his miraculous love. But Advent is the time in which they were waiting as a nation upon the God who had promised a Savior who would come into the world. And um, to wait means to trust, you know, when... It, it means to trust with hope and expectation. And uh, I love this, this psalm, Psalm 27, verse 14, 
Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Waiting is used so often in Scripture. Um, We are not on God's timetable, but God is perfectly in control of the universe. Do you know why the world doesn't implode uh, or explode from within? Uh, Do you know why every day we wake up and there is a sunrise and a sunset and, um, and we still see the seasons, and we're still intact as, as a, a global world. Do you know why? Because God holds it together. Because God is, is transcendent and above us, and He is in control. Um, Psalm 37, verse 7 says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself. My friends, give God the gift of a a yielded heart, a peaceful heart, a heart that says, this difficulty in the hospital with my little baby is trying to me and to my family. This difficulty with having no income, this difficulty with putting up with difficulties, with challenges in my marriage, help me, Lord, to know what to do, how to wait upon you. Teach me your way in this situation. This difficulty with the prodigal, whatever it is, maybe it's just difficulty with how hard life is, just the the mundane. Um, I look back now and I feel like the the depth of the souls of my children were wrought in the midst of difficult life. In other words, we had joys, we celebrated, we enjoyed um, the time as our family was growing together, the rhythms, the the hope, the meals, the conversations. But we also, um, there is a point when they thought Sarah had a, a brain tumor and we had to go through all the medical for that. Um, I had my OCD, ODD, o, um, you know, a dyslexic um, Nathan, and, and I had to figure him out. Um, Clay had back surgeries. We had car wrecks. We went four and a half years without a salary when we were trying to get Whole Heart Ministries going. And that's a whole nother picture of waiting. We moved to Texas to live with my mother-in-law because we believed with all of our heart that God wanted us to have a ministry. And so Clay and I moved there, and I'd never lived with my mother-in-law before. That was also interesting. Won't go into that right now. Um, had two miscarriages within that period of time. and um, But we believed that God wanted us to have a ministry to parents. To We believed that parents weren't being inspired and trained and guided and led in this discipleship process like Jesus had with his disciples, and that people weren't saying, motherhood matters and parenting matters and and the way the legacy that we leave through the lives of our children is is what is going to determine the the character the virtue the souls the vision of the next generation and and so we dreamed of having this kind of ministry while not ever having written a book while not ever having done a conference so we had a first little conference in our home for 11 people and uh, that wasn't an, uh, an auspicious beginning, but it was a beginning, and everyone who came said they loved it, and they'd never heard anything like this. Then we began to put feelers out to see where we could speak, and eventually we had in our church, we had a, a conference of 150 women. And the next year, by faith, we rented uh, a hotel with a room for 600 women, and it was packed out. And so the next year, we rented a hotel for a 1,000 women, and it was packed out. So then we started doing these conferences in different parts of the United States while writing books, while raising our children, uh, while putting up with all the dilemmas in life. But um, from the time that Clay and I got married until the time that we really made our first um, salary, um, our our first real wage with our ministry. We had worked in a church before. We had worked in other places. But um, we had to wait 12 or 15 years till we even began to see 
God blessing our writing, blessing our conferences. I look back now and I think, I can't even imagine all that God has allowed us to be a part of in books, in conferences, in podcasts. And yet it was waiting over a lifetime, being faithful to the season that God had for us at that moment. Um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Give him the gift of a, of a devoted heart today. Do not lean on your own understanding. My friends, I couldn't have possibly known what was happening back then. I couldn't have known that even uh, Nathan and I, because we were we trusted God with his um, different challenges, and we worked through it, and we, we walked a daily path with him, I couldn't have known, I couldn't have understood that God was going to use the testimony of Nathan and my relationship to encourage other people who had children who were a bit out of the box, um, who had, uh, you know, sort of different lives. So it says in Psalm, I'm sorry, in, in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. He will make your paths straight. Isaiah 30, verse 18, Therefore the Lord longs to be gracious to you, Therefore, he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait for him. Isaiah 64, 4. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you who acts for those who wait for him. Don't light your own fire. Don't come up with your own solution. Wait for God and walk in the wisdom that He gives you day by day through His Word. Well, my friends, I'd better close this off because it's going to be a very, very long long podcast by the time you listen to Joel and me and also um, when you listen to this part of it. But um, I just... Really, uh, thank you for your letters. Um, I do want to throw out there, and I'm probably going to get into a lot of trouble for this, but I am thinking about maybe three or four times a year hosting something at my house or my church for those of you who are members of um, Life with Sally who live in the Colorado area. Because I thought it might be fun for me. I've done this at Wild and Free conferences. I do it wherever I speak. I try to get together with the members from my membership. And you can anybody can join my membership. It's a blessing to us. It keeps our staff and our family growing uh, and our ministry growing. Um, you can go. It's, a, it's actually a great gift to give for Christmas. I hadn't thought about that. But um, as is Joel's um, substack, um, we, we try to create resources so that people will be encouraged, will be inspired, will say, it does matter. It does matter that you are being faithful to your call, to to, um, the ideals that we share in common. So thank you for those of you who are part of our membership. I'm thinking about having a Christmas gathering. So I'm going to say, um, write to admin at wholeheart.org, or if you're already in our membership, um, leave a comment on the forum and let me know if you are somewhere in the area, I've got to figure out how many people there are. And if you might enjoy three or four times a year getting together for a couple of hours in an evening to talk and discuss and be friends. So there we go with that. Um, so uh, consider becoming a part of Joel's uh, wonderful new, um, it, it's just going to be focused on spiritual encouragement Um, through music, photography, essays, writing, and encouragement. Um, I just think it's going to be such a cool thing because Joel has been such an encouragement to me. And then for those of you who want to become a part of our membership, we have Awaking Wonder Units every month. We have cooking recipes. We have book recommendations. Uh, I give a Bible study podcast. Um, We have special uh, book study is coming Um, for our members in January and February. So um, consider becoming a part of that. We just really appreciate 
the amazing people that are in our arena that we have the opportunity of being kindred spirits with, and that's you. Thank you for being here today. Lord, I pray that you would bless my friends today. Lord, some people are discouraged and disheartened by having to wait so long. They are like your people who are waiting upon you. Lord, I pray that you will break forth into their hearts and lives in in very encouraging ways, in the same way that Jesus came into this world to bring light. People who are walking in darkness have seen a great light. I pray, Father, that you would um, give my friends delight and joy in this Advent season. I pray that um, you would bring healing, restoration, goodness, love, encouragement, and I pray that you'll give them strength for the story that you have called them to live. We are so grateful that you broke into our world, Lord Jesus. We love you so much, and we give our hearts and our lives to you today in waiting with gentle and quiet spirits as much as we know how for the coming of your ways in our lives. And I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Well, my friends, have a really good week. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. I hope you've enjoyed our time together today and that you'll join me next week. Be sure to look for more inspiration on my blog at sallyclarkson.com. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.